Okay, hello everyone. We are live from yeah. home. It's a very new experience for everyone. It is. Live from home. Okay, so yeah, very new, very new way of uh, reaching everyone. So this is going to be the first of a series of six uh, Hearns at home. Of the big changes yep, here in Victoria. So let's give it a few seconds so we get a few people online. Yeah, sure. Let's see. Let's see if I can see. All right, we got Captain S Man. He's online. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Can you well, tell I guess us? For those that don't know, <clears throat> we're we're on um, uh, extended uh, uh, um, stage four lockdown in Melbourne at the moment. And Victoria is in stage three, so it means that we can't do our regular sort of show at two o'clock on the Fridays. But this is a new thing, so welcome to my home. And I guess this is interesting. Looking at uh, mixed place. Yeah, that's my my shed. It's uh, it's the shed of the unfinished jobs. You know, I, I guess uh, you know, big part of uh, of my job and my passion too is to you know try new products and learn about new things. So often I get, you know, I buy things for uh, that at times end up in, in the in the in the shop and I bring them here and try them out and test them and experiment. So there are lots of uh, things that are started uh, half yep. finished perhaps, sometimes they get finished too. So lots of interesting things yep. that we can look at here. So yep. Rob is online. Hi Rob. So it looks like we've got a few people. So new format. Uh, I would say for everyone yep. let's start asking some questions if you want. We can we can talk about this and then we have a few new products that we receive in the last in the last few days that we can uh, we can show you around really so fire through some questions looks like we've got about 30 people watching us already tonight which is fantastic thank you everyone again so hello from everywhere yes so obviously we are live from melbourne uh i'm from my home and bj is from his own place from his house yes. because uh, uh for those who just join us obviously here in victoria we've got this uh uh, heavy restriction lockdown and so we we can't do the live in a shop so we be trying a new format so yeah okay Hayden few, few coming online fantastic so bitch you, you want to start or, or shall I make a start oh, I guess um, how about we just talk about a few things we've got around yes and, and I guess I'll start off with something new I guess it's behind me I've got a few things stacked up here so a few personal things and and something new from the shop and I'll start off with a uh, little Titanic. So, new from Ming, we've got this um, little chibi Titanic. Okay, so, so I guess uh, Ming's made these sort of things before. They've got tanks, they've got um, uh, planes and, and ships. And this is the first time they've done a passenger liner, a passenger liner. So, I do like, a quick, uh, I do a quick, uh, open box. really cute. This They're really cute. Style. This is a round style. Have a look what's inside. Have a look what's inside. The great thing about these, the great thing about these is they're quick. Build. Build. You don't need to, you don't need uh, to use, use any glue. Uh, use any glue. Just snap together. Just snap together. It's all pretty much in one. Packet. Pretty much in one packet. Okay, so, okay, you can get so a, you can get a good idea. I guess. Good idea. I guess. So the shape here. of the bottom. So the shape of the, of the bottom of the hole. Really, really round. Really, really round. And on this side. And on this side. The other. The other section. So these sections. You know, so they're all pre-colored. And you got another section. And you got another section here for the hole. For the hole. Inside. Then on the inside. Yeah. You have parts for funnels. Parts for funnels. So all in all. So all in all, you're going to have. Super size, 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 so really cute, really cute. Really like these, really like these. Very nice. What so do you last, got there, Nick? What do you last got there, week Nick? we had the Titanic of the nanoblocks, and today we have the mini Titanic in plastic kits. Very good. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's it. Yes. Uh, yes. this week we receive a large delivery from BT Design. So uh, BT Design is uh, an Italian manufacturer of uh, uh, body shells for remote control cars, mostly racing cars, buggies, and touring cars. So. Uh, they have released um, some pre-cut body shells. Uh, you can see them here. So this is a large innovation because cutting body shells has um, 
some of you may know, it's, it's a really uh, difficult and time consuming job. And so yep. they release this vision yep. range that is fully pre-cut and they've got different version, obviously for different cars. So this is for the hot bodies, D819, uh, but they have the same for the Mugen, the Kyosho, MP10 and so forth. And they have also the version for the electric cars and the nitro car. So the nitro car will have the whole cut here for the, for the engine and the opening for, yep, yep. Um, yep, yep. Uh, for the fuel tank. So this yep. is a vision range, yep. they're very nice. Um, and obviously they come clear, so you can you can uh, pre-paint them. Um, <clears throat> yep, it's BT, it's BT Design is also producing this uh, fantastic li liquid masking uh, that is really helpful when you try to paint the body, make some really interesting interesting shapes actually. So yep. Yep. that's arrived today. Uh, and as part of uh, the new range are all the stencils. Um, so let's see if you can see them there. So. This is a stencil that you can put on your uh, on your body. Actually, let's throw that uh, on the on the inside like so. And then when you airbrush, yep. you actually yep. cover up and get different shading and different shapes and make it makes it really really interesting. Uh, there's a laser cut. There are laser cut. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the laser cut. It is about twenty different shapes. Um, that just arrive again. So very interesting. So. You, you, it's another way to enhance your uh, your design of the bodies and make it really really interesting. So, uh, well, so um, someone is asking. Uh, yep. so, uh, we've yep. got a bit of a problem with the audio, so the audio is doubling up. Um, so that's not working. So let me see what else we can turn off here. Oh, sorry guys, I've got one more to turn off. All right, is there any better? Let's give us a, give us an okay. Hopefully, it's a bit better. Okay, so okay, now it should be improved. Oh, okay. Maybe we should say something. So like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Right, actually, if we test the audio, we don't talk. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. It's a. Okay, thank you. So we'll we'll uh, we'll have to we'll have to make it up as we go. This one, we we had to yep. you know make this uh, this change really fast, and uh, yeah, this is it really. So hopefully it's improved. So um, okay, thank thank you, Rob. So everyone is confirming that is improved. So there were a few questions okay. um, yep. in relation to liquid masking. So which is this product here? So you can definitely airbrush this one. Yep, yep. Uh, you need to use a, a, a big airbrush. You know, th this is your um, traditional airbrush to use when you when you do your modeling. But for this one, you need to use something slightly uh, slightly larger. Uh, oh, like a spray see. gun, yeah. Yes, that's a spray gun. Yes, that's right. Like a larger spray gun. Uh, so definitely can be airbrushed. Um, you know, something like a 0.5 millimeter at least. Uh, you know, I use a. I use a paintbrush often enough, so that is also a good option. And you normally want to layer it yep. three times. Can I see a close-up of the body? Uh, here we go. So that's the body. So that's called vision. So the body's got all the, um, the protective film on it as well. It does have the protective so film. Stop it, here we go. Very good. So, uh, so we looked at the stencil. We look at the body. They also have a new body yep. for touring cars. It, it is called 720. Okay, this is a one ten scale really body. Nice. That is really really sleek. Okay. Yeah, real speed speed machine. The speed machine. Um, so obviously, it's it's, it's based on a McLaren. Um, and it's one for the GT class, but the style is phenomenal. Uh, BT Design is working really hard to make some really interesting, interesting body shells, and this is one of those. Uh, this one doesn't come pre-cut. Uh, they do some. They did some pre-cut in the past for um, different cars, but this one is not pre-cut. The wing is attached here at the back, so you can cut the wing and then you love it to put it uh, at the back here. So here we go. Does it have a wing? Yeah, the wing is at the back here. So someone is asking yep. if it does have a wing. So, uh, and that's for yeah, nice. beta design. 
So, what's next for you, BJ, out there? Me? Oh, yes. I guess what I've got up here is a bit of a personal collection here of some, some Mac kits that we, we picked up in our trip last night to Japan. Now, I guess we, we talk quite a bit about Mac. And um, I still think a lot of people would know. A lot of people don't really know what Mac is all about. So you, you'll see the artwork that's on the front of these boxes. So these, these are all done by the, uh, the artist Kaoyo Kiyama, and he developed this particular style and universe. Now these were initially um, done as um, kit bashed uh, kits in the 80s, and they were uh, put into a storyline in Hobby Japan magazine. And then over time. Uh, the story and the ownership um, was in contention, and so it's just been a few years that uh, Kaoyo Kiyama has been able to uh, claim ownership and release kits again. Now, every time he releases a kit, he'll have new artwork on it, which means that each release is a collector's item. They're all different. So the polar bear here, which was released about two years ago, and I've got the Nise here as well. Now, the interesting thing about these is these will probably get re-released in the future, but they'll have different artwork and they'll be different item again. So these are actually, they gain value as time goes by. And these I plan to build them sometime, probably in a diorama or something, but for the moment they're still in their box and they're all clean and it's going to have a, a bit of time to think about what to do. But that's my collection so far. So that's the, the big stuff that I have. Very good. I, I, I forgot my kit actually. I've been building um I think it's a frame I'm a girl actually. BJ, you probably know know better than me what I'm actually oh, building, yeah. but uh, it's actually really nice, yes, uh, yes. nice little kit. I may bring it up for next week, really. But uh, something else really yep. interesting we actually received today um, is this Hobby Wing uh, Quick Run Fusion. So this is a very interesting uh, little innovation. Uh, well, may not even be a, 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 an innovation. I think BJ, you will remember that a few years back. Uh, I think uh, perhaps Orion tried something similar. But uh, I think Orion had something. Yeah. So this is a motor with speed controller built in. So that's designed for rock crawlers. Um, and as you see, that's your motor and the speed controller is built in in the in the in, at the back here. So you have all your yep. on and off switch and connection to the battery and the connection to your uh, receiver to control the motor. So very nice and small this is an uh 1800 kv uh it goes i think up to yep. 3s as well so nice very nice smooth uh um, crawler kind of combo as such and as i have all the yep. new foc technology which is a uh, very advanced way of of uh, uh censoring and and controlling the the motors which is very helpful when you are a low speed so someone was asking about this just last week from memory yep does come with a program card as well. These are quite tunable, so you can adjust all your drag brake and um, all sorts of different uh, different parameters. And that's called Fusion, uh, Quick Run Fusion from uh, Hobby Wing. Here we go. Yeah, very neat. Look at the wiring, really neat. You yeah. might have a sensor cable in there either. That's right. So it makes it, it really, really easy and, and, uh, and good. Do they, uh, so one is yep. asking if they do this in in uh, plane airplane motors. I'm not aware of that really. Um, no, I don't think so. No, I've, I haven't seen any preps. Say again, BJ. I think I've seen them in the past, like uh, on drones and such. But I haven't seen them lately. Right. Perhaps this, someone is gonna is gonna try again eventually. So. Mm. So this is the Hobby Wing uh, Fusion. So we're having uh, we're having quite a bit of uh, rock crawling happening at the moment. This is uh, one of the wheels that we started building the other week, and that's going to go now a six nice. by six, uh, which is which is quite nice. That's a two point two alloy wheel bit lock on a one point nine uh, pit bull uh, tire, and it's actually quite nice and grippy. Mm. So lots of rock crawling happening at Hearns at the moment. Uh, we're working on our TRX-6 project, which is just behind me at the moment. And hopefully over the weekend we do a bit more progress. This week was a bit rushed, so we didn't get to do any work on it. Yep. Okay, to you, Beach, what, what's next? Well, since you're talking about the RC car thing, I thought let's have a look at something I've got from the past. 
So this is a Victor Bray drag 57 ship. Wow. So this was initially <clears throat> released by GB Racing. So some years ago, this would have been like 15 years ago. Initially, it was a, a gas car, but this one's been converted into an electric bird. So some years ago, let me just get these clips off. So we're just trying to make a, a, a fast car run on two cells. And I just came up with this because we had the chassis lying around, a roughest motor system. Okay, so, all right, so there's the body off. And then you can see here, there's a basic chassis arrangement there. So the, the front part of it, so the aluminum pressed part, this is the original gas powered part of it. But then the rear is a electric GV touring car gearbox. And then you see how it's got the offset motor here. Okay, and we just had the batteries and I just mounted those down the center here with a, held on with a big strap. So this one had a, um, a 3.5 turn motor in it, two cells, and I think at the time we did uh, just over 100 kilometers an hour with it. Um, that was before we started doing any more tweaks, and we just put some foam tires as a lock diff, and then you can see how tiny are those, it's basically O-rings for all the front tires. It's basically these wow. weren't moving very, very much, you just needed that to keep them in a straight line. So that's a, a Mamba speed controller. So this is one of the earlier Mambas, and this was um, uh, designed so it could be either um, uh, sensorless, or in this case, it's got a sensor on it. You see the, the sensor cables in. So there you go. There's the uh, electric version of the GV Victor Bray, which I, I built. I think this is going one. I don't want to build in the world. So one of these days, we'll get it going again. We'll get it even faster than it was. Wow. That's interesting. So last week, we saw the new uh, big modern drag cab from uh, Tom, the Tom brought into the shop. And uh, um, yes. that will be one of his projects coming up uh, in the near future. So that's uh, that's uh, what you had how many years ago? How, how old is that model? This one. So the actual gas version would have come out probably 15 years ago. Wow. OK. And then this version was done about 10 years ago. OK, so 100 k's an hour 10 years ago. And now it looks like Tom is going to go to 180 k's an hour by the look of it. That's right. That's a bit of a difference, isn't it? Absolutely. Big difference. Big difference. So uh, let's see if we've got any particular questions here. I think I've missed a couple just before. So let's see if anyone has questions. Meanwhile, just pop them in the comments. Uh, let's see. I think I've seen something here. Someone is missing the hobby man. So. Uh, yeah, so we all obviously the shops are closed. Uh, we do trade online, so we, we can place order. You can give us a call. Uh, we have reduced stuff, obviously, but we can take phone calls and organize your orders and send them out. So the Albert Man is still uh, is still operating. You just need to get in contact with John or Ben or one of the guys there, and they can help you out. Uh, someone is asking who is BJ Barber. Who's BJ's Barber? Yeah. BJ's father's name is BJ. Yeah. <laughs> Self service. Yeah. So it looks like my twin brother. <laughs> In the mirror. <laughs> Good one. Um, so, yeah, Tony suggested we need to go back to speed runs. Well, definitely, hopefully, once these lockdowns are, are over in the next couple of months, we can uh, we can organize a, uh, a, a speed run Sunday, perhaps. That would be really good. Uh, and uh, Rob is yeah. asking uh, when the Kyosho Phantom will be arriving. Well, last time I heard it would be it was meant to arrive um, mid late August, which which uh, which is very soon. So, Rob, hopefully very soon. So one is asking what mod sh we should be doing on the TTO2 Tamiya TTO2 Audi BJ. What do you know about the TTO2? TTO2. Tamiya. TTO2. So, yes. well, like, what, what sort of first mods? Yes, yes. Oh, I guess the, the, what can you do on a TTO2? I think you can change gear ratio, so maybe pinions to get a little bit more speed. For handling wise, I think there's an adjustable um, upper camber set you can get for it, so you don't have that um, the solid top link. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Raspberry 2. I'll, I'll have to look it up and, and find a few. There's quite a few bits and pieces in here for that. Yes, I guess you can go brushless, I suppose. You know, if you decide to go really fast, you want to go brushless, then I think you need to do quite yeah. a bit of work. Um, in a yeah, sense that you that's, probably that's need that's to. Yeah, you need to upgrade all your, your drivetrain preps, you know, the center shaft, you should be probably metal preps. Um, yes. You know, quite a few upgrades, but definitely someone is suggesting tires here. Definitely good tires always help. It's probably one of the most important things on uh, on touring cars. Um, tires are, are important. Uh, someone is suggesting brushless motor, definitely brushless. There'll be a, there'll be a, a good options. And then at that point, you can start upgrading to a few, few metal alloy parts, like BJ was suggesting. Well, you see the biggest difference if you change to a brushless motor. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, so we have a train questions, which is great. Uh, yep. So, uh, Dion is asking, uh, how long after the restriction will be receiving uh, DCC for model trains? Uh, the, we, we have DCC uh, controllers and, uh, and DCC chips. Uh, in stock to an extent some items are missing due to I think this is the concept is uh, is short of some uh, or some uh, chips but we have a few a few a few options in store uh, it depends what you're looking for as far as DCC really so I was actually going through my cable just before and I found one of my trains that I bought a few years back actually that's a flashman oh. flashman model so why we see if uh, if there's any other question in relation to DCC, I'm gonna bring this up. So, so let's oh, see. Oh wow! Let's say uh, little train. So let me switch to a bigger camera. Okay, is that better now? Sorry, I turned off all the audio here. So, Sandy, this is a model from a company called Flashman, which is uh, German. Um, and um, let's see if you can actually read it. So, there was a, a specific train that was running in my city in uh, in Italy. There you go. That's uh, an HR scale. Uh, all European models are normally in HR scale. So, that's uh, part of my Prada collection don't have too many things and this is one of those yeah. that I end up hunting down from US actually because it's uh, long discontinued Wow okay so let me see what else we've got BJ have you got anything else there otherwise I'll, uh, I'll carry on I'll end up finding quite a few things in the garage here well if you're looking at trains I mean, I've got a train here too so this this is something that I've had for Maybe a year now because I was planning on doing a little layout. So let's just pop this open in. Okay. Aha. That's a little mini trains uh, diesel. Um, so it's narrow gauge. Um, this this is uh, waiting for me to actually start building a uh, a layout. So this is going to be a uh, a little, I guess, like a suitcase layout. Open it up, and then um, just be running around triple layer up to the very top, and then coming all the way down automatically. And how to do the automatic bit? Well, I'm still have to work that one out. But that's a cute little mini, mini trains loco, and uh, I quite like the, uh, the little valve gear, which you might be able to see there. You see, they just little they rotate around as it drives along. So. That's what I've got floating around here. That's your train. So there's a bit of a narrow gauge layout coming up soon. Uh, so we've got a couple well, more hopefully. questions here. So um, talking about DCC, so um, we we're looking at turning so the Flying Scotsman and the Harry Potter by Hornby into DCC and sound. So Hornby has released some DCC and sound chips. Um, that you can install 
Uh, now, when you install sound, uh, there is a little bit of extra work that is involved because you need to install all the speakers. Um, I don't believe the chip that Homebee is offering does come with speakers and everything. Um, so we'll have to look into that, but there are definitely kits to convert your um, your Flying Scotsman into, into sound as well. Um, I think they do even do a TTS. I'm not really 100% sure on that, but there's definitely an opportunity, especially if you give us a call in the shop and we can, we can, uh, we can look up that specifically. Uh, yeah. So Rob is asking what webcam you're using. Well, maybe we should have a talk on our setup really. There was, uh, uh, thank you Matt for uh, setting up everything in uh, less than 24 hours since we decided to move the, the live from home. So I, I'm using a, a camera, the same camera we use in the shop with a, with a, with a, uh, with a um, input card, HDMI input card and BJ is on a webcam on, my, on a laptop actually. That's it. So quite uh, straightforward. Hopefully the quality is, uh, is uh, reasonable. So we'll uh, improve as we go along in the next few few weeks. So if you have any suggestions, let us know. And if you have any other yes, questions please. about uh, you know things that we we, we, we can talk about, uh, also is uh, uh, is we're very welcome. Oh, fantastic! So the quality seems fine. Very good. So, what's next, Thank BJ, you. for you? Are what's you... next? Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, have you got more? Otherwise, I have I'll... something new which I. Okay. All right. So recently, we got in some amusing hobby kits. Ah, Just very nice. Get it so you don't get all these reflections. On. Okay. So, so amusing hobby, um, they specialise in a lot of um, uh, kits of uh, Wobble Two uh, vehicles, which um, didn't necessarily exist. Now, this particular one is um, uh, the Panther Two. Uh, it's a a concept vehicle. So the hull of the the tank was actually made. Uh, the turret was an idea, so the turret was a small, small turn, which I did fly in the version, but not with this sort of gun. And I, I think these are really interesting because the Germans, uh, even though that wasn't the greatest conflict, I mean, we all know about the uh, the problems with, with conflicts, but I'm just interested in the uh, the machinery and how far they advanced with machinery. And if they continued on with these sort of designs, then they were. Uh, incredibly powerful and um, uh, formidable machines. Now, so the, the Panther II is basically a up-armoured um, regular Panther, but I used the uh, small turret on it with the uh, larger 88mm gun. So actually, I've started cutting this up. Okay, so you've got the, the bottom of the hull here. Got the top of the hull. Okay, so those that are familiar with Panthers would recognise that that's pretty much the layout of a standard Panther G type of thing with a few different uh, aspects like the, these protrusions here are a bit different. And then the next main difference would be the turret. Okay, so you've got the turret here. Now the turret is a totally different shape, it's much smaller and it's much more angular. And then we've got uh, different uh, uh, gun options here. Now the amusing hobby kits are um, uh, very detailed. There's no interior detail, but there's a lot of small bits and pieces. So there's basically the uh, the tool sets. You got the uh, the fire extinguisher. You've got the ends for the cables and the regular tools, the hooks, uh, the cleaning rod tube there, over there, and then you've got some options here with different vents. Okay, there's standard sort of panther vents. You've got the uh, extended one, which um, acted as a heater. So the guys there inside the tank wouldn't freeze to death. They got these really tiny bits here for all the hooks and such. So I just quickly go through and give you a quick inbox review. So you've got your your sprockets there. You've got your drive wheels. So obviously this has a later war tank. It had the uh, steel wheels on it because they were running out of rubber at that stage. Okay, so these are exactly the same bits. There's multiples because of course you got lots of wheels. Okay, so I'll pop out these over here. Okay, these bits are from a different kit. These are actually from a Jaeg uh, Panther type of thing, so that's why there's this 
metallic over here, which you won't use, but you'll use all these other components. And there's the large barrel. They're all really crisp, as you can see here, you can't see any flash at all. So amusing hobby, they do very nice tool work. And then this bit here, or well, you can see how thick that is. I mean, there's, there's four sheets there of tracks. So you either love it or you hate it. Uh, these are the individual track links, and these are actually the working ones. Wow. Um, and then got some nice photo wedge. Okay, so you've got brass photo wedge here. These are for the, uh, the side uh, armor. Um, and then there's another one there, or your grills. And another one there to support your side armor. So that's three sheets of um, photo wedge already. You got your decals. So thanks to them there. You got all your different numbers. You can choose anything you like. And then there's a bit of wire for doing the cables. And then the manual, of course. That's pretty much it. So this is something I'm working on now. And um, hopefully it'll be a, a, a diorama being ready for the next expo, which will hopefully be next year, which means I've taken on two dioramas. So I don't know how I'm going to finish that, but that's another story. You got to start. So this week was very interesting. We received uh, a large range of really uh, interesting kits, specifically in the armor uh, department. Um, quite a diff few different yes. brands. Uh, so the, that one was a good example. And uh, BJ, what are the other uh, manufacturers that was, air, air, um, you, you probably remember better than me. Does, what was, does? Yes, we got some stuff from uh, Das Werk. Das Werk, yes, that one, yes. Das Werk, right, um, So, uh, Gecko. Gecko, yeah. Um, and Classy. And Classy, yeah, so. For, so Classy for, did the large 16 scale uh, M5. Very nice, so. Quite, quite a lot of uh, uh, new new kits, and they're all quite uh, quite extensive. Actually, we, we did a couple of reviews just uh, uh, just uh, early in the week, and they're quite impressive kits, yep. really. So, very good. So we got quite a few quite a few other questions here. So I see Tamia, I see restock. So uh, there is something incoming. We don't know what. Uh, perhaps I, I believe in in the next few weeks. I can't really give you an ETA specifically, but between I believe late August early September we may see a few a few extra extra kits um, unfortunately worldwide supply of that product is extremely limited as is for other manufacturer like Traxxas so uh, it will be very very few kits coming here and there so keep an eye but looks like Kyosho is um, is coming out with that uh, with a few uh, with a few interesting releases we should see uh, the Panka the four-wheel drive Panka coming out very soon uh, and there is the Ultima that we just received recently. Someone is asking about the Optima Mid. I was in BJ, do you know much about the Optima no, Mid? No, no news. I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see those again. Will be very good. I mean, that was an interesting series. So, looks like Kyosho is, uh, is, is having a good run. They're releasing quite a lot of new products, so I wouldn't be surprised to see something something else uh new uh coming soon we will see um we have a question how do we know when new kits arrive uh well if you follow us on our social media and on our lives we will definitely make sure to inform everyone that the new kits are incoming so we'll definitely know a few days before and yep. we will definitely present them on the live if you go back three or four uh, three or four lives ago we we were just in the middle of the live that we received a big tamiya shipment so, any full drive um, paying car left? Yes, we do have a, a room for a couple more pre-orders. So, if you jump online um, or just send us a message, we can organize a, another pre-order for you. Uh, what else? That's it, really. So, I think uh, let's see if there is any more question coming. Let us know what you would like to talk about next week. We've, uh, we, we, we have a few ideas, but if you have any, any preference. Let's see what else. Uh, so yeah, so we'll see what happens. I've got lots of things I can, I can show you around here, but you know, we may, we may uh, walk around my collection 
not sure whether Maya is a real collection actually. There's uh -huh. lots of bits and pieces really, lots of projects. Um, the next competition actually, the next competition, BJ, that's uh, oh, that's on you. What's, uh, what's the next competition actually? This week was very rushed, so we didn't get to talk much about it. Oh, I've been thinking really hard, but I'm thinking, how about military diorama? I think so. so. Something a bit more complicated with a few elements, so maybe a vehicle and some figures, and we'll judge it as a, a complete artwork. Yeah, that's that's a really good idea, actually. So what was everyone's opinion about the diorama competition? Do we need to give more than two weeks this time? Because being a, a larger project? About to be finished. Three weeks should cover it as well. And then three weeks should be enough time to build a um, a small vignette or a small diorama. Fantastic. So, okay. So that could be that could be the uh, the the new competition. So we may do an announcement in the next few days. But it looks like the executive decision. Diorama. Yep. Yep. If, yeah. If, yeah. I think that would be interesting. If you have any other suggestion on the live, you know, just put some comments while we're here. Now, what did you have there, Beach? Oh, got to talk about these things. So this is the um, the Gashinin, in um, uh, Lucky Dip balls that we got in recently. Okay, so for those that don't know, I mean, uh, this this series is again part of the Mac series, which is um, from the uh, artist Kao Yama. It's um, the machine in Greek universe, and so it's got all these powered suits. Now, there's basically three different suits that you can get within a, a lucky uh, dip ball. So, well, again, can't remember. So there's the uh, there's the cows, the raptor, or the flea game. And so once you open it up, so we got these available as individual balls. So as you see, yep. So you can get a single ball here. Okay, so there's a nine set, or there's the individuals that you can get. Now, I might as well just open one up, just let you see what's inside. So let's, let's pop this one open. So those that have been in, to Japan, you would have seen these balls. Uh, they'll have a variety of different things inside them. And you just pop your coin inside. That could be 300 yen, 500 yen, or something like that. Coin goes in. And then you'll see this go you know, clunk, comes out. You have no idea what's inside. You crack it open, and then bingo, you see what's in there. Okay, so this one's a little purple. What have I got here? Oh, this is a raptor. It is a raptor. Okay, so there's a purple raptor. Now, interestingly, these, even though it's a very small ball, you'll see that there's basically one, two, three, four, five sets of sprues. So there's quite a lot of bits in there. And they're very detailed. So 32 scale, so you use them for any 32 scale uh, diorama as well. And then you've got this little manual. Look at the manual there. Some no idea. And then on the back, gives you your step by step instructions. So you can see how there's quite a few steps. And this one's got the options of um, you can have the, uh, the hatch open or closed. And then there's also a set of decals as well and they, these are all random as well so you don't know which one's going to come with the particular kit so that's what the uh, Gatchin in um, mystery balls are all about very good very good so when we went to Japan a couple of years was it two years ago now I think um, BJ and I yeah, went for a right. trip to Japan uh, to visit the Shizuka uh, show model show um, was quite impressive for me. It was the first time in Japan. It was quite impressive to see the shops. They had all kind of items in this uh, in this uh, in these little bowls, really. So you put your your few. I don't know, how, how how much is a is a the, the cost of a bowl BJ normally? Oh, three to five hundred yen. Okay, so you put your three or five four or five hundred yen, and then you get your uh, your bowl with your uh, mystery mystery gadget. Uh, so there's shops full of full of those. So meanwhile, we have some questions yep. here. So I'm going to grab my TRX-6. Yes. Uh, here we go. You see it behind me? But uh, before we look at this, someone was asking uh, if if you paint uh, if you paint the spray mask on, how many coats? Um, 
I think you're looking at this one, the liquid mask, is that correct? Uh, who was asking the question? Uh, Fly Ambo, is that the one you're referring to? If it's this one, you normally need to spray, my suggestion is three coats. Uh, it's normally a good, uh, a good way to, uh, to start and then, and then obviously you need to cut it. So it's not too thick, not too thin. Uh, so three, three coats is what, you, is what you suggested really. So if you go on the BT Design YouTube channel, uh, they have a really nice uh, tutorial on how to use the liquid masking. But generally speaking, you spray it on, let it dry. You can use a, a hair dryer or a, a hot gun to, um, to let it dry a bit faster and then go over three times and you should be ready to go. So, this is our TRX-6. Doesn't fit in the camera. It does, yeah, this way. Beast. It's the best. So, unfortunately, no progress since last week, but hopefully there'll be some progress this weekend. Um, what do we have to go on? I'm not really sure. Definitely these wheels so have to go onto this this car. Let's see if we can put them on. They will look pretty much like so. So definitely, definitely an improvement. Um, and uh, what else we've done? We put a we put a metal uh, bumper bar there the week and a big widening kit at the back here. So it's really really wide. So we we will uh, do a bit more on this perhaps next week. There'll be an update. And uh, Fly Amber is also asking: um, Is this the same if we if we paint uh, spray paint or uh, uh, and is you know three coats is the same? Obviously, when you brush it on, it's less consistent. Uh, but yeah, it's a similar kind of uh, kind of solution, really. So thank you, Bruce. Bruce likes the TRX Six. So this is one of our favorite too. Okay, what else? So, uh, BJ, someone was suggesting, I think Kern was suggesting that we talk yep. perhaps next week about our where it all started for us. So, that would be a good uh, a good topic for next week. We can bring back some uh, sure. some of our history. You, BJ, have quite, yep. a, quite, a, quite a lot of background in hobby. So, it would be good to talk about that one. Sure. Very good. Okay, so if there's no more questions. Uh, let me see. Well, I can carry on with everything here. I've got on my market here, but uh, we we may some finish stuff. up here at some point soon. But I guess, well, maybe one thing I discovered when I was just building some stuff. So I've got one of these ultimate nippers from Godhand. Now, these things are pretty special. Now, I, I always thought, well, they're pretty expensive and are they really worth the dollars. Now, the, the, the biggest difference I've found with these is particularly when you're cutting very fine bits, like the, like the tanks that I'm about to build now. And I've started building one of the mini art kits. Now, they've got tiny, tiny, like one millimeter sized bulkheads and such. The advantage of having something this sharp, so basically these things, if you don't know, they're only sharpened on one side. On one side, and they're very, very thin, they're like a, a scalpel blade. So when you're cutting this through something very small, if you were using normal double-sided cutters, you'd normally expect the part to go flying off when the, the blades meet in the middle. But these, interesting enough, is when you slice through them, you see them slicing through the uh, the carrier, and then the part is still uh, um, resting on here, and you can easily pick it up without it flying off anywhere. So that's the advantage of using really sharp, expensive cutters. But then again, you have to remember that the small parts are still very small and very easy to lose because after I cut it off and I knew where it was, I dropped it and lost it. So you have to be careful that way. But if you're careful afterwards, then these are a real godsend. Okay, so rather than losing three bits flying off into the ceiling and bouncing into the carpet, or well, lose one bit because you cut it off and you accidentally dropped it yourself. So these, these cutters are really useful that way. And I found I'm using these more often now because they do give a very clean cut and it's less stress because there's no there's no click as such, you just slice through the bits. So that's just a little tip I picked up recently. Very good. Yeah, it was actually quite impressive when we started receiving uh, some of those new nippers. So we received the gold ends and then we received the the nine uh, the nine steps. Let me let me jump here. Let me see. The nine steps few few weeks back and um, it was the first time really for me having a play with different uh, with different uh, side cutters and 
it was a huge uh huge difference between the you know the 20 dollar cutters and then you move to 30 40 50 and then the uh 99 dollar god hands it, it is um really a big difference so uh there is a reason why they are a bit more expensive and uh yeah the big difference so uh, I think there's a question. Uh, Rob is asking how the God Ends do compare to the Tamiya cutters. BJ, this is for you. So the God Hand ones are um, single-sided cutters. So Tamiya don't actually make a single-sided cutter. They're um, sharpened on both sides. So the Tamiya ones are very robust. So I think they're a very good cutter. Um, uh, you'll be able to cut through a lot of kits at the end. They'll have uh, like, like always, I have a little mark there which I need to trim off. Now, the the, the God Hand ones uh, end up, rather than having that, that, that pointed part which is left over, it, it has a slight flat edge. So it's easier to clean up um, and it feels less stress on the wrist. So if, you, if you're like me and you build a lot of the, uh, the model first before you create the painting, um, then it definitely helps with um, a repetitive um, finger soreness. Um, apart from that, I think the Tamiya cutters are very good, like most other cutters. Um, I think if you like to use the, um, uh, the God Hand ones, like the top of the range Ultimates, then it's a good idea to have another set of cutters anyway. You use those as a, a primary cutter, and then you use your um, God Hand ones as the, uh, the final cutter. So they're, they're all very good in their different ways. Very good. So T Tony has actually been using the nice steps. Thank you for the feedback. So Tony thinks this has uh, been really really good um that's a that's a, a premium cutter from nine step just a reasonably new new product for us uh, we have a question when the trucks are shipment is due um we have been told that there is a shipment late august uh we yet don't know what's going to be in it apparently the filament rate is very low uh worldwide so um due to the limited manufacture that was possible in you know i think in china and taiwan in the past uh, in the past months all manufacturers are really really behind so uh i guess you know we need to sit patience and we will we'll have few items coming in here and there but we definitely have orders in place and you know we'll uh, we'll be fulfilling pre-orders as we go along i suppose you know so uh hopefully we see something uh in the next two to three weeks uh this well, last week we received a team Corali at uh, in both shops actually. That it's uh, it's an alternative to Traxxas. Uh, the Corali team Corali is uh, it's actually a very old brand. Uh, BJ, you may remember that from a few years back. It was a very uh, renowned uh, racing brand. Um, it, I think it's a Dutch oh, well, company. Definitely. I mean, you're talking, about, you're talking about those early days when uh, Shoemaker and Corali were fighting it out with um, their. Um, uh, pan cars, 12 scale, cup racing over in Europe. Um, Corelli was a uh, leader in their design, very unique. Uh, Shoemaker was um, uh, interesting uh, at the time as well, and then gradually it turned into touring cars, and they were quite, um, uh, uh, again, uh, innovative with their designs, and now they've gone into um, uh, large, really chunky dashes. Yes, so we we did a, a very good video just in December with a with a uh, with a Chronos, which is probably one of the most uh, the, you know the, the 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 key car they they produce. Uh, it was really good fun actually. Uh, that that's a good option. And now they come out with some one ten scale actually, a bit smaller, two wheel drive, brushless, uh, two to three S, and those one go up to uh, ninety k's an hour actually. So we haven't tried those yet, but that will be a very interesting uh, car to to have a test run once we can go out again. So Team Corral is a good alternative to, to Kyosho at this point in time as well. Definitely worth looking at. Uh, David is asking the Kyosho motors. Unfortunately, uh, as we, we discussed in last week, uh, uh, no, we don't. Uh, I don't even know whether they're actually available at the moment, the, the Kyosho motors. So say again, BJ. Which Kyosho motor was that? Uh, um, I think it would be a Kyosho motor to put into the the new four wheel drive uh, pen car. Really, uh, I think they're planning to re release oh. the the old uh, Kyosho brushed or brushless motors. I'm not sure which which are probably a brushed motor, but I'm not sure really. So, uh, how about what about the Tamiya Vanquish? Uh, AJ? Vanquish. The Vanquish. Yes. Vanquish. 
I don't know. So I, I haven't heard any word of the Vanquish being um, released. Now, from memory, is the Vanquish the plastic version of the um, the Avanti? Could be. I think would have had the plastic um, arms on it. I think it's going back some years now. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that not one. Too sure. We'll have to Okay, so we do we do some research and we we'll, we'll uh, see what we can find out uh, for next week. Actually, Rob is confirming that it's yeah correct, BJ. So yes, that's that one. Right. Okay. Good. So no updates on that. Yeah, we we'll have to check that. Very good. Okay. So I think uh, we may we may end up the live very soon. We'll yep. resume next week. We've got a Any bit of uh, memory lane. Can talk about some of the projects I've got around here. I've got motors and wheels, all kind of things. So very good. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I saw we went up to thirty-five uh, viewers at some point tonight, which is fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, make sure you. You know, yes, thank you. Follow us through through the week on our social media, uh, comment so we we know what to what to present. If you have questions on product, we can definitely respond. Um, perhaps we can do some quick videos for you, um, and uh, you know, bring you the the shop experience online as effectively. Okay. So one more question. So uh, Flyambo is asking if you can order uh, anything from Tamiya new releases. Uh, yes, uh, we can. Um, normally we pre-order those a few months ahead. So definitely we, we have all the new releases incoming. Uh, if there is anything particular that you know, that you've seen, um, let us know. But in general, we present them on on the lives or to, through our uh, newsletter and Facebook probably a couple of months ahead of uh, of the of the actual delivery yeah very good okay one well, i'll say thank you for uh, joining us right. once again and we'll uh, see yep. you throughout the week see you next time stay stay safe uh and tony's asking the 130 second bullhead actually bj bullhead yes 130 second let's go over again 130 second one thirty-second. What's a one thirty-second bullhead? I'm not sure. Tony is asking for this. I don't know. Is, is that like a a, a non-radio control one? Sounds like. Well, Tony, Tony is going to have to comment and let us know a bit more. We'll do some research for you. So for now, yes, yes. I think it sounds like a mini four-wheel drive. Yeah, sounds like yes. Um, could be a mini version of the bullhead, perhaps. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see what Tony has to say. Just give him a second. He's probably typing. It's a tiny bullhead. Right. Is this a new release? Right. Is this a new release, Tony? I haven't seen this yet. Yes. Oh, we have to do a bit more research. All right. on that we'll one, have to do some research. Fantastic. All right, with this yep. one. We will resume next week from the mini mini bullhead. And so, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, stay in touch and stay safe. And we'll uh, see you next Friday night. Um, same time, same place. Yep. Catch okay. you later. See Bye. ya. Bye bye.